Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Hobby Tip video. This time I have a tutorial for you, going through step by step from construction to finish and painting and all of that of these ruin bases. So these are some overgrown ruin bases that I have, and um, this method can be applied to a whole range of different types of bases. Um, I'm using them here for my terracotta army, so I have some Chinese themed bases, more or less, as you can see, but you can use it for different kinds of ar armies and different types of bases. So let's just dive right into it. So the first thing we're going to do uh, before even grabbing, grabbing a base is we're going to make some textured tiles that we can use to make broken stonework on the base with. To make the tiles, we're going to take some very cheap air drying modeling clay. Uh, its main qualifier is that it is cheap, yeah, but it also does take uh, quite well to tea tails. And we're going to start by kneading this a bit with uh, wet hands, as if it were dough, dough or something. This will soften the clay up a bit and make it easier to work with. If you use a freshly opened package of clay, um, it might be soft enough from the start, so you don't have to do this. But you can store open packages of, of this clay fairly well. Just put a few drops of water in the package and seal it up and keep it somewhere fairly cold. Um, and it, it's fine, you can keep it there for a long time. It will dry up a little bit um, in storage though, so you will need to knead it a bit more afterwards. This piece I'm using here has been stored for a few years, so it, it needs a lot of kneading. A good way to test the softness of the clay is to put it in your, in your hand and squeeze. If the clay pushes out uh, from between your fingers, it's uh, soft enough. You shouldn't have to use too much force to do this. Next we'll flatten the clay onto our clean plastic workboard. Um, make sure to use something that bends easily that you can pick up separately. <coughs> a, a sheet of plastic card for example. Uh, you'll want something that you can uh, peel away from the the uh, tile when you're finished. And we're gonna use a flat rolling pin to uh, flatten the clay out um, and create a smooth, even surface. You can buy flat rolling pins, but I found that you can take your textured rolling pin and put it back in its sleeve that it's bought with and use that instead um, to save some money. Using the rolling pin and some water, uh, flatten the clay into a neat tile. Fold it over to create straight edges and control the thickness. Once you have a nice flat tile, uh, you can take a break to wash your hands. At least I don't quite, uh, quite enjoy the feeling of the clay drying on my hands, so this is a good time to do that. With clean hands and a clean rolling pin, we are gonna take the textured rolling pin out of its sleeve and use it to create some texture on the tile. You can use any rolling pin you want. I'm using a China rolling pin from Green Stuff World to create bases for my Swandan themed army in the Ninth Age. But for different armies, different bases, you can use um, other textured rolling pins from other companies as well. Um, put some water on both the rolling pin on and on the clay, but be careful. Too much water and the, and the details of, of the uh, texture will sink down into the clay, and too little and the clay will stick to the, to the roller. When applying the rolling pin, roll it over the clay and apply an, a constant even force. 
if you mess up, you can fold the clay over and work it with some more, some more with the flat rolling pin, and then try again. I actually read, redid this uh, exact step um, once after shooting this. When you are satisfied with the tile, just wait for it to dry. I recommend 24 hours, but uh, at least leave it overnight. Here we can see a few of the finished tiles. You can make them with different thicknesses and different textures. And then you can keep them in a drawer or something and get them out whenever you need them. Um, next we are going to grab our base and we're going to use a rolling pin here as well to create some uh, more details on the ground like poking out of the dirt. Here I use brown stuff because it gives very sharp details and it doesn't stick to the pin very well. Uh, you can also use milliput fine and I do that too on some of the other bases. Um, generally I use it because it's a cheaper clay so if you want some larger details on the base you can use that like pay roads and stuff. When using the rolling pin on the brown stuff, you can be quite liberal with water, applying it to both the pin and the clay. I then choose a specific part of the roller that I want to use and roll it over the clay. Next I grab a sculpting tool and smooth out the edges of the clay around the detail that I wanted on the base. We are breaking out the tiles that we made, and we are breaking them up into smaller pieces. And we'll glue them onto the base using wooden glue, or PVA glue, or whatever, some white glue. You can cut the pieces too and glue them at different angles, uh, poking out of the ground to create nice effects. We will also glue other bits and pieces to the base, um, like small rocks, and skulls, weapons, woods, chain, severed limbs. Whatever suits your, your taste and uh, fits your theme. Any open space left is covered in wood glue and then sprinkled with fine sand. And then you make sure that you wipe excess sand away from the edge of the base using your finger. That way you get uh, some nice smooth edges. Once the sand has dried in place, the final step of the construction phase is to water down some more wood glue and cover the sand and the air dried clay with it. This will seal it all up and stop the sand from loosening and the clay from being activated by the wet paint later. And here you can see the final result of the construction phase. I made 8 bases for this unit. 
Um, and you can see I used some, more or less the same techniques on all of them. Some have paved roads made from uh, the white milliput fine, and I have some pieces of balsa wood uh, here and there. All of it is chosen to fit with my theme, um, and for things that will work well color-wise with the models on top. Moving on to the painting phase, we are going to start with some airbrushing. If you don't have an airbrush, don't worry too much. Um, all the steps here can easily be replicated with a normal normal brush. It just takes a little bit longer to do it. Also, you don't have to use the exact colors that I use. Other manufacturers are fine and other colors are fine. Use whatever fits your, fits your theme and your preferences. First, we'll apply, apply a printer all over the base. You can use a rattle can, perfectly fine here, here if you don't have an airbrush. Next we'll apply Vallejo Game Air Cold Grey at a central angle. This will help pick out the detail of the base and uh, set a lighting for it. You can use a large dry brush here very easily if you don't have an airbrush. Then we will do the same with Dollar Rowney White, again picking out the detail of the base. The last step at the airbrush booth is to apply Dollar Rowney Sepia all over the base. This sets a brown base tone for the whole thing, and um, you can you still keep um, some of that detail from the center. If you don't have an airbrush, use a large brush to wash it all. Let's say water down sepia tone. Moving on to the brushwork. Unfortunately, I uh, messed up a bit and I didn't film me painting the same base that I built. So this is just a similar base. Um, and again, the colors that we use, the exact ones, they're not super super important. First, we are grabbing Vallejo model color pale grey and a little bit of Vallejo game ink sepia. All we want here is a grey color with a little touch of brown in it. And we will dry brush this all over the stones. Then we will mix in a little bit of Vallejo model color pale sand and dry brush again over the stones. We shall move on to the dirt and apply a dry brush of AK-47 Deep Brown. Don't worry too much about not covering the stone bits. Um, they do line the dirt after all, so there being some dirt on them is perfectly fine. We'll follow this up by mixing in some pale sand again. Um, and I'll mention that up until this stage I haven't cleaned my brush. When dry brushing, you can just keep working new paints into the brush and it's fine. With that out of the way, we shall move on to washing. And we shall apply a thin down coat of sepia all over the dirt. Followed by a wash of Olejo Game Inks green and blue mixed together with the sepia to create a rainbow of green, blue, brownish hues. This is applied to the stone to make them a bit more interesting. You can use whatever colors you like here, really. Purples work really well. I choose these colors to uh, complement, uh, contrast actually, the models on top. Next, I'll paint the wood, and for this, I use um, Vallejo Game Inks red and black. I use the same colored woods on the minis on top to tie them nicely to, to the base, but use whatever way you want to paint wood. Once all those washes have dried, we'll apply a dry brush of pale sand all over the base, covering everything. After that, it is time for some tufts. 
we will, shall be applying this using super glue. You can use white glue if you prefer. I use super glue because it dries very fast. And you want to use a fair amount of tufts to create this overgrown look. And you can use a whole variety of different kinds. I'm using some flowery kinds, some bushy kinds, and some grassy kinds. Once all the glue has fully hardened, we shall bring out the gaming sepia again and use a crappy old brush and some watered down paint. And then we'll wick it wick a bit of it away and smush it into the uh, tufts. This will help tie the tufts to the environment better and it will create some nice deep shadows in them. Once the sepia wash is fully dried, grab a dry brush with some pale sand and apply it to the top of the tufts. This again ties them to the environment and it creates some, creates some nice highlights. Next we'll paint the edges of the base. I use AK47 black here, but you can use any color you like, like a dark grey or a brown, or even goblin green if you prefer. Finally, we'll go back to the airbrush and apply a varnish. I'm using a 1 to 1 mix of AK47 Ultra Matte Varnish and Alejo Satin Varnish. If you don't have an airbrush, I'm not entirely sure what's a good way to replace it. You can use rattle cans, but uh, in my experience, experience they are not that good. But uh, you could probably uh, skip this step. It's a nice way to finish off the base, but it's not entirely necessary. The purpose is to mat everything out and seal it in place. This is especially useful if you're having uh, have applied leaves and stuff that can easily uh, fall off, um, because this will prevent them from falling off. And here you can see the final result. All of the d details on the eight bases. There are some uh, tufts here and there, the broken stonework, the pavement and ground, the dirt, the broken bit bits of woods, some skulls here and there, a few trinkets in uh, different colors, and uh, a lot of flowers, creating a nice little environment for my mi miniatures. So I hope this was useful to you, and I thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers!